absolutely beautiful Cancerian friends and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2023. We're Cancer this month. It is a moony month. We have actually got three moons happening this month. We've got two full moons. We've got a new moon nestled in between there. Now this month we are also going to see Mercury turning retrograde as well. Uranus will turn retrograde. So plenty, plenty, plenty to keep us going and to keep us evaluating what's going on in our lives, our consciousness and the cosmos as we travel through August. So let's get in here, Cancer, and talk about everything that is going on. Now, first and foremost, on the first, we've got this beautiful full moon happening at nine degrees of Aquarius. Okay, this particular full moon is going to ask us to end something, acknowledge something, or to make an adjustment. That is the nature of full moon energy. It's asking us, what am I consciously aware needs to come to some kind of culmination, right? I maybe started something years ago a year and a half ago and now it's time to bring it to a close or to an adjustment okay so as we're having this particular full moon through your eighth house a couple considerations run to the table first of all as you're considering the eighth house i'm going to ask you you know where you need to detox something in your life where do you need to let it go you need to literally get it out of your system out of your tissues out of your mind this is aquarian energy so i would even ask where do you need to get something out of your social situation because you've likely had some kind of an awakening that's come with this right this particular moon is also squaring to to jupiter so really you could be like wow i understand today why that is not a truth for me anymore or why i can't base my security in that or why other people can't be the source of my happiness or why other people can't be the source of my income right this could be a time where you're looking at ending acknowledging or adjusting that now in other very practical ways in the eighth house we also see death debt finances and assets here as well so things having to do with financial um arrangements that you are connected to another person or another resource or your debts you could absolutely be looking at that and so wouldn't it be nice if you get news of some kind of a settlement happening through this eighth house area you know or you know is there someone who kind of you lean on them and they lean on you for support and something is changing in that partnership in that eighth house sector for some of you i do think honestly too this will end up leading to something like a deeper connection in your relationships where you either get married um, you make the commitment or something like that okay now on the 16th we're going to go the other direction and we're going to have a new moon and this one is going to be happening at 23 degrees of leo so lighting up the second house space now at the new moon we're planting our seeds of intention to begin something new or to bring an awareness and this is a fiery awareness with that leo energy right where you need to take a little bit of pride in who you are what you do there's a generous energy that comes with it a childlike energy but at the new moon you're also being asked to create a solid ground underneath yourself leo is fixed fire so take pleasure in creating a financial life a value life around you that you can take proud of take pride in you know it's a big deal cancer to step up and be that big brother that big sister that parent that you know that guide for people in your life to be a joy guide for someone who might not have it so whether that mean that you know you are stepping up with children in your life or you're taking on a financial situation or taking resp responsible um, actions around finances or the things of value this is a great time for you to start fresh with it now the other thing i think that the second house this particular new moon is absolutely you know just excellent for is to bring some activity and awareness and assimilation cancer into your self-worth and how what you do makes a significant wave or ripple throughout the life that you are leaving and it's really important i think to come to terms with that that there's no life that you're living that only impacts you so getting to see you know to the positive and to the negative where that ripple may be impacting people around you but ultimately finding some self-worth in yourself because you do have significant value in the world that you are participating in okay 
When we get to the 23rd, we're going to see the sun move into the energy of Virgo, and we are also going to see Mercury turn retrograde in the energy of Virgo. Now, this lights up your third house space as it does every year. It's time for you to check in and see where the sun is shining here. Where are you ready to get down to the details, get down to the practicalities, be discerning about what you need to do to get organized, where you're going to look at the pattern of your thinking, your communication, uh, where you've got perfectionist tendencies that might be making you and or others in your life quite crazy, right? So it's really the time with the sun here where you're motivated to invest in getting yourself organized. I absolutely love that. And healthy. It's a healthy energy, you know, get those doctor's appointments underway, get those annual checkups done and things like that. Now, as Mercury turns retrograde in this um, Virgo energy, just to say, if you flash back to August 3rd, that's actually when Mercury moved into its pre-retrograde shadow time, okay, and you'll see that on the screen here at that eight degrees of Virgo. So now on the 23rd, as Mercury is taking its station into retrograde at 21 degrees of Virgo, you're gonna wanna remember that these are the degrees that we're looking at through this third house lens. 21 degrees to 8 degrees. What does that light up in your chart? Do you have planets? Do you have points at those particular, do you have angles at those particular degrees? Because that'll really tell you, you know, where the story is that the planet of communication, thinking, decision making is lighting up and where you're needing to review, rethink, reorient, re-examine um, things that have been happening in your life in this third house space. So think siblings, communication, travel, and I'm talking short distance travel. You know, you're not going country to country, maybe just city to city and things like that. The third house is also where we sign contracts, okay? So is there a contract that you're signing or that you're going back to or maybe you're negotiating something instead of just buying and selling, you know? this is going to bring you back to a review of that union in some way now i tend to say if you have mercury retrograde in your natal chart or by progression or even in your solar return chart the mercury retrograde season for you instead of pushing you to come so much back in and look at that internal landscape and internal life is actually calling you back out like you've been thinking about it long enough okay you've been thinking about getting your life together and getting organized and signing these contracts long enough now it's time for you to stop rethinking and start bringing those decisions outward bring them into the world the rest of us are running in to rethink you are demonstrating your decisions in a very outward way so let me know if that's your experience during the mercury retrograde seasons if you have mercury retrograde in one of your charts okay now we'll see mercury leave retrograde it will station direct when we get to September 15th, but you know I like the full cycle, so we're not gonna officially be done with the Mercury retrograde in Virgo full cycle until we get to September 30th and we see Mercury get back to that 21 degrees of Virgo and then begin to move on. On the 27th, Mars moves into the energy of Libra, lighting up your fourth house space, and we'll have this energy here all the way until October. So Mars being your action energy, how I get it done, what I desire energy, it's in the energy of Libra. So it is about balance. It's about finding solutions in ways that are more peaceful. There doesn't have to be so much conflict, or if there is conflict, you're looking at all sides. You're looking to bring peace. You're looking to bring balance and justice to what is going on. So instead of, you know, having to, because Mars also brings inflammation, it can bring to the surface what needs to happen and conflict. But instead of in this fourth house, your domestic area, it could also just be bringing a change of season here you're planning something, you're planning a move, you're getting a strategy together about making a move or changing something in your house. Maybe someone's moving in, a relationship is moving in, something's moving out, right? Maybe this is Libra energy. Are you taking on more relationships in some way in your domestic zone? Now, I love Mars in the fourth house because I also think it is really great 
for getting your house together. Like if you've been trying to renovate that bathroom for like six months, like this is the time to get it done. Mars here is going to help you act and take action and get things done. Okay, so use this Mars in Libra time. If you're looking for a house or you need to do anything in the household domestic zone or even things for your parents, use this season very well to your, your benefit. Now on the 28th, Uranus is taking its retrograde at 23 degrees of Taurus. And if you watched your yearly video, you heard me talk about this Uranus retrograde. And Uranus actually moved into its pre-retrograde shadow time May 12th of this year. Okay, and that was at 19 degrees of Taurus. So if you've got things in orb or around 23 to 29 degrees of Taurus, this is your conversation. You're doing a review of something in your chart. All of us are doing a review of something in our chart, but you will have specific planets, angles, or points that you are also reviewing. And what you are reviewing here is where you need to do and make decisions that allow you to have freedom, where you'll want your resources to have more freedom, what you're willing to do to have that freedom. You know, you've already been working on it. The pathway towards freedom and digging up the gems or the innovation or other ways to do things, especially around your social group, your friends, your organizations you've been attached to, things online, social media. Um, your friends have definitely, I think, Cancer done a lot of changing in this last handful of months since May for sure. And or during this retrograde over this next four months, you'll make some changes because you're like, wait a minute, you're not actually... Um, you're holding me back from living my best life instead of helping me move forward and have this freedom and have this advancement. This old idea I have about friendships or the groups I'm connected to is actually keeping me back. So it can be a really nice time in Taurus where you're clearing out the things that aren't actually resources that help you have this freedom. Now Uranus is going to turn direct in January, January 27th, and we'll see it leave its full retrograde cycle back in May again. But it's a great time back up to May 12th of 2023 and see what was going on, where, where the common themes of your life, especially in your social groups, where you were starting to pick up, you needed a little bit more freedom, okay? On the 30th, as we close out this month, we've got a full moon happening in this beautiful Piscean energy at seven degrees. Again, we're being asked to end something, to acknowledge something, or to make some kind of adjustment to plans that have started. For you, this is bringing your attention and the awareness at this lunation into your ninth house. So truly, contracts this again i don't know what it is cancer this month but it seems like is there are you signing a contract is there something legal on your table and you are making the decision to like go through it because this is an expansion in some way that seems to come from some kind of a contract that may be legally binding so let me know in the um comments if that's you but also your faith concepts around faith and what you believe and the philosophies that ground your life are under review at this particular time, okay? Because if they can't stand the test of time as this moon is in conjunction with Saturn who is retrograde, it's going back over the stories that you author your life with in a very day-to-day -day kind of way and allow you to live without all of the chaos of the mind, it allows you to live with some kind of freedom, certain that the universe has your back, right? These things are being called to your attention at this time and you've got them or you don't. And that's really what I think that you'll find out in, in some of your philosophies. Because what happens for you today or tomorrow, Cancer, if there's some kind of event that happens in your life, do you feel like you have something that can solidly ground you and no matter what, you can be okay. Now, other things in that ninth house are foreign travel. Now we're getting bigger. We're going out of whatever country you're in, whatever space. And maybe you're even needing to, under this particular full moon, you know, you're needing to um, pick up your, your, your spiritual tools and practice some forgiveness, right? Do you, do you need to forgive something that happened in another country for you? 
do you are you i think about this too with the ninth house because this piscean energy gets really really interesting when we talk about spirituality because you can even be the energy that is moving between the worlds like you physically are the energy moving in between the worlds so are you surprising someone you're going overseas you're going to see them you're going on an adventure that allows you to be exp- ex- surprised by expanding your understanding of a different culture and bringing your attention to them whatever expands the adventure and the knowledge and takes you just a little bit further and allows you to walk in between the worlds of what you know now and what you don't actually know or what you can see and what you have to trust and believe is really going to be the vibration here because remember Pisces trusts it like childlike faith no matter what it's all going to work out I just trust Virgo where the sun is on the opposite side wants the plan and wants to know all of the information and show me how it works prove to me that the universe is real these kinds of things and you're attempting to bridge the gap between childlike faith and having all the plans and all of the answers this month cancer okay All right, my beautiful Cancerian friends, I hope you have a gorgeous month. Let me know in the comment section down below how it is shaping up and coming out for you. And I look forward to seeing who is signing a contract and what is this contract that you are signing. Let me know down below, you guys. I love you and I'll see you next month.